Papers, Big Jeff sorting your window boxes, plus the 72-year-old publishing sensation, local author Billy Hopkins joins us. And that's today's Lunchtime Live. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Lunchtime Live. Thank you for joining us yet again. I'm Eamon O'Neill, and coming up today... One of TV's most popular faces, Nigel Havers, is here to tell us about his role in the hit theatre comedy, Art. Southport pensioner Billy Hopkins has taken the literary world by storm. Not bad for a 72-year-old. His remarkable story coming up in about 10 minutes. And if you fancy sprucing up your window boxes for summer, Jeff Turner's got some top advice. Plus, the North West Choir who went back to school and learned well, how to sing. When 72-year-old Billy Hopkins decided to write a book, he was turned down by every literary agent in London. He persevered, though, and when it eventually went on sale, our kid shifted an incredible 125,000 copies and spent several weeks in the bestseller charts. Not bad for a pensioner who was brought up in pre-war... Polly Hurst. His second book has just been published, and I'm pleased to say Billy joins me now. Well, Wilfred, actually, isn't it? Uh, yes. Yes, the, your real name. Well, the, yeah, everyone calls me Billy, though, nowadays. OK, yeah, yes. of course, because now, <laughs> now, you, now you're a bit of a celebrity. I've Billy. changed my name, yes. You know, it's really interesting, this, because you are actually following in your daughter's footsteps. That's right, yes. Cause she was a, Kathy was a writer for, mm. for a while, wasn't she? Yeah, she, before you. she uh, she's written 16 books, actually, translated into 16 languages. I'm very annoyed to say, <laughs> because mine is still in English. It's in English and, yeah. and northern, I suppose. And very well. northern, yes. Right, our kids, that's, that, that's, the, that's the one everyone's talking that's about. The main you, you got your own computer, you sat down, you typed it out and you published it yourself. That's right. And then what happened? Well, what happened is, after publish, uh, I published it myself, uh, and then we sent it out to, I think, uh, something like 30 agents. Now, somebody, I sent them the, out to 30 agents all at once because somebody had said to me that they take six months to answer your letter. And I thought, if I write them one at a time, mm. that'll take 15 years. I'm not sure I have that much time. <laughs> so I, I wrote to them all at once, and the answers which came back, well, I could write another book. But briefly, first one, um, what a charming story, one said. What a pity you're not a little girl. Oh, how patronising. <laughs> Sorry. Another one came back and said, good story, but you, learn, you should learn to write sideways. Oh, dear. Well, the only time I learned to write sideways was when I was teaching in a tough school in Ardwick, when you wrote sideways, because if you dared to turn your back, somebody hit you on, <laughs> the, on the back of the head. <laughs> uh, then finally I thought, oh, damn it, I'll, I'll publish that thing myself. Yeah. So I got myself the computer, learned how to use it, and then printed 100 copies. Uh, they went faster than a pint of mild going down my dad's throat. Excellent. So I did 800. Uh, those were selling very well. And then one of them landed up on the desk of a man called John Sherlock. Now, John Sherlock was born in Salford, but he's worked in all the major Hollywood um, studios. He's worked on and been the script advisor on things like Peyton Place, Dynasty, Dallas. The book fell in his hands. He loved it. Yeah, well, if he was from Salford, he would, it would have echoes for him, because although it's set in Collyhurst, Ardwick and yeah. so on, it's, you know, it's northern. Oh, yeah. And if he's out there in Hollywood swanking around with all the big stars, he would have read that. And, uh, I mean, it's autobiographical. I'm sure you've taken some, uh, some yeah. liberties with it, haven't you? But essentially, it captures the essence of growing up pre-war in the northwest of England. That's right. And then High Hopes, which is the sequel to it, starts in 45. Uh, 1945, that's 45, right. Just as the war, or the wars, the two wars, the wars ended. Yeah. And Billy, the character, goes off to college. And somebody, Manchester City Council, or whatever it was called then, pays 40 quid for Billy to go and learn to be a teacher. Uh, almost right, yeah. yes. They, was, it, was that true, though? Or have um, you not made that bit up? No, they lent you £20. You had to pay, you had to it, pay back. it back out of your And salary. they gave you £20. Yeah. Yes. One interesting thing that happened here, you, you might be um, interested to know, was that I have actually created a new genre, a new category of books. Which is? When our kid landed on the desk. You know, you've got categories like crime, fiction, uh, you've got romance, science fiction. My category is OMM. It's a new one. Old Men's Memoirs. Is it? Yeah. So. Oh, I'm going to write one. <laughs> That's right. Excellent. And then, um, I mean, well, I read High Hopes last night, actually, and I loved, I loved it when you started teaching, age 19, in the, uh, down in Ardwick. That's right. You met Laura, who you eventually married. That's right. Uh, yes. Into the Scottish Mackenzie clan. And it, it's, it's so evocative, it's great. And I can identify with it, because my mum was dragged up in Collierst. Yes. She was in St uh, Pat's Parish. Oh, yes. And then Kate's story will be out later in the year. That's your, that's following your mum's story, really. That's 
was right. right. My mother died at the age of 90, about 10, oh, some years ago anyway. When she was 89, I took the tape recorder into her um, room and said, tell me your life story. Do you know, I've always wanted to do that with my mum and my auntie Betty. Boy, could she talk. Yeah. She talked more than I do. No. She and, uh, oh, she did. <laughs> but she talked and I filled four sides of tape. Yeah. And this became a family heirloom. When I finished the first two books, I thought, we've got a story here. So Kate's story will be out in August, yeah. and it's based, and that's your I, I underline the word, based on her Yeah, of course, because you do have to take literary liberties. Anyway, we, we, I must move on, but thank you very much. It's been delightful meeting you, and oh, I must apologise for having said Stockport oh, when yeah. I meant Southport. Oh, the Southport people won't like that. Dragged up in Colliers, worked in Hardwick, uh, retired gracefully to Southport. To Southport. How lovely. Right. Thank you, Billy. Billy Hopkins. Right. Now, if you struggle to keep control of your whole garden, well, if you live in Southport, you'll have lovely gardens, I'm sure, but if you live where I live, you've just got a little window box.